RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney and welcome to the first installment in our Cloud Brand Deep Dive series. It's a pleasure to introduce Ericsson Sabel Tambaz, Head of Cloud and Purpose Built 5G RAN. Sabel, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Sean. It's great to be here. So to set the stage a little bit, we're seeing a real acceleration in RAN modernization worldwide. There's a shift towards running radio workloads in cloud environments. There's a shift towards hardware software disaggregation and deployment of multi-vendor systems. And there's also increasing adoption of standardized open interfaces that make those multi-vendor systems possible. So before we dig in, could you give our audience a bit of a primer on the naming conventions? You know, how does Ericsson approach open RAN and cloud RAN? Of course, I mean, first of all, Ericsson believes that the networks of the future will be increasing the resilient, open, sustainable, and intelligent. And open RAN will be a critical role in, in, in realizing this vision. And when we look at open RAN, we see three key pillars, which is cloudification, open management and automation, and open interfaces. And we are fully committed as Ericsson to lead the industrialization on open RAN in all these three key pillars. If I just give examples of all these examples, all, all these three areas, for the cloudification basically means that you disaggregate run hardware and, and the software. So it means that run software can run in more general purpose servers or what we sometimes call code servers. In this area, we have our commercial Ericsson Cloud Run offering, which enables portable portability in uh, multiple service and, and the cloud platforms. We also have a very large ecosystem support. Open management and automation means that you actually have support for intelligent and highly automated network management functions running on more industrialized SMO environment, which enables multi-vendor and having multiple RApps from, from vendors, from CSPs or the third parties. And in this area, we also have an offering called Intellig Ericsson Intelligent Automation Platform, uh, which is our SMO and much more, which is multi-vendor capable, support R1 towards R apps and also support A1 and O1 towards run. And it also enables for multiple R apps again running uh, in this platform from, from different vendors. Finally, open interface. This is the mostly kind of uh, talked area in the, in the open run environment. Open interface is basically key to enable horizontal networks where you have the multiple pieces of the network for the computer software management can run in a standardized interface from multiple uh, different vendors. Of course, for, to enable that, we need to have the standardized and, and the global interfaces. Uh, I think the most exactly used one is the open frontal, which is key to connect the third party radios to the network. And from Ericsson's side, we recently announced that we have more than 1 million machine MIMO radios that's already deployed are open run capable. And going forward, all the new hardware support uh, comes with the open run uh, support from the beginning. And we also support the open run in our compute, both for purpose-driven run and also for cloud run. And the software solutions will be key to kind of enable this openness in our compute and the radio platforms. But we should, of course, remember that in order to really realize this horizontal open network, integration will be key to turn this to a commercial deployment. Yeah, you touched there on interoperability. You know, clearly there's a need for standardization and interoperability work, and much of that's driven by the ORAN Alliance. And we know that Ericsson is a major, if not the primary contributor to ORAN Alliance's technical work. Just give us an idea of what you're doing in this space to ensure your customer's success. And I'm really thinking about this recent announcement with uh, AT&T and their open RAN rollout. Uh, first of all, thanks for the acknowledgement. Uh, we definitely see ORAN Alliance as an instrumental to create global specifications to enable interoperability as well as maintaining a very high performance for these open networks. And we are happy to co-chair three working groups in ORAN Alliance, and we will continue to be uh, the leading one of the leading members in the ORAN uh, Alliance and contributions going forward. Of course, to enable then the success of our customers and enable interoperability in these open run networks, we do kind of several things. To start with, we first of all we push the requirements for the open interfaces in the ORAN Alliance. So because we don't want to compromise from performance at all, we know how important it's spectral efficiency for our operators for ever increasing demand from the consumers and in use cases. So we cannot really sacrifice from the network's performance. So for that objective, we are very, very successful. We are very happy that we managed to bring a new architecture for the massive MIMO networks with our industry partners. And this will then boost uh, the performance for the open run networks with massive MIMO. We, so we are very happy about this achievement. The second of all, of course, in order to enable interoperability and to enable scale, 
we need to work with a large amount of ecosystem and we are actively working the industrial leading partners and we're promoting the open standards to enable interoperability at the same time delivering of course sustainable and intelligent networks in this area a few examples first of all we are cloud round software is uh, highly portable so we already support operator chosen cloud platforms uh, for the the second one we support open front hall and we already enable interoperability for the third party ORUs. In the management area, we are already partnering with 14 RAP partners developing RAPs in our SMO, and this number will only go up. And finally, we have been the leading vendor in the NTNI announced Interability Lab, which is funded by the US government and led by NT AT AT&T and Verizon. You mentioned that there's not going to be any compromise on network performance, which I know is hugely important to your operator customers. But there are other drivers here like OPEX considerations, TCO, technological capabilities, and what that all means for more effective network monetization. So maybe give us an idea of how you're thinking holistically about all of these motivators. Uh, absolutely. I mean, as you said, TCO kind of new services monetization is key to really get the best out of this kind of innovative, innovative network platforms. So when we look at where are we in 5G, I think we have been saying that we have been successful first of all 5G, where we create the very strong platform with a high coverage capacity and, 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 and in kind of different user experience that we have never seen before. And we also have all this built in uh, kind of capabilities that will enable different services in scale. So I think what we are expecting for the second wave of 5G is that we will see adoption of what we call high performing programmable networks, which will enable our operators to for the revenue growth by differentiated connectivity with customization of performance for different services, as well as reduce and optimize the TCO by having higher energy efficiency and as well as automation. So in terms of RAM programmability, it's very important to kind of understand what actually it means. And for us, it means that you have very kind of strong capability and innovation in the run, which is also complemented by the SMO uh, that looking for the more the whole network management area. For the run, we will be seeing advanced 5G advanced features that boost the performance, enable automations and operational excellence, but also enable new services like RedCap for critical IoT, indoor positioning, outdoor positioning, and many more dimensions that really open up for consumer and, and enterprises. At the same time, it will enable real-time observability to really see how the performance of these different use cases and users are actually changing in real time. But most importantly, we will enable closed loop real-time orchestration to ensure that we can enable intents from the operators in real time or different use cases. And this will all be unlocked by run. On the other hand, SMO will be a critical part of the programmable networks. So what we will do, it will translate the operator's business intents to run behavior. It will also allow us to do run real-time optimization for performance and other kind of service assurance. And it will also help us to give a statistical overview of the observability, how the performance of different use cases is happening in the, in the network level. So it will be a quite interesting and, and quite big inter interaction between the SMO and, and run will then enable the programmability. So from customer perspective, what it then it means that we are really talking about this innovation platform will be unlocked with new services, enable the, the business needs and growth, but at the same time, uh, kind of enabling a TCO optimization. This is more on the software level. Of course, we should not forget that our effort on hardware. I mean, we will continue invest on Ericsson Silicon, which is key to enable the highest energy efficient uh, uh, compute and radios in the market. And this will then be used for the overall offering. But our position is that in this horizontal open network, we would like operators to choose our, our solutions just because of they want to, not because of they have to. And we will enable all these options for performance, TCO and growth in all in our end-to-end -end offerings. Now on Cloud RAN, and perhaps this is complementary to our discussion about integration, but one of the core concepts of Ericsson's portfolio is this idea of any site, any cloud, any server platform. So there's sort of inherent implication here of multi-vendor. But just to isolate the any cloud piece, this can range from the big three hyperscalers to an all private operator owned and managed cloud and also a hybrid cloud model. So how are you thinking about that market dynamic? Uh, I mean, first of all, the, when we design Ericsson Cloud Run, we wanted to ensure that it's highly portable so that we can provide this flexibility of operators to choose different cloud infrastructure. 
And from the beginning, we have been working with different cloud infrastructure vendors, such as Red Hat and Google Cloud, and enable the support of different infrastructures and the configurations, and, and giving this flexibility to our customers. But when we look at where the industry is today, is that we are seeing that mainly the cloud solutions are running for the private cloud. And again, it can be hyperscalers or, or more specialized solutions like Red Hat. But going forward, as the technology becomes more mature, we believe that some part of the run functions can also be running on the public cloud. But in terms of giving this flexibility, we also have been offering two different options to our operators to choose from. And they are one of them is system verified and the other one is validated on. So the system verified enables Ericsson Cloud Run solution runs together with the Ericsson uh, Cloud infrastructure called CNAS, and that is being supported by the third party service. In this case, we have the full responsibility to integration and responsibility for the network deployment. But we also offer what I call validated on. So in this case, we are offering the validation of pre-chosen configurations from the operators, but then operators have the full responsibility later for the automation and the deployment and orchestration in their network. But in all these options, I want to emphasize that from the run application point of view, the, the performance and all the capabilities that I just mentioned for the high performing programmable networks will be there from the beginning. And the main reason is that we have been developing our own run software track completely ourselves, and we don't have any dependencies on the third party uh, hardware platforms, nor the different software stacks. And we see that industry is actually has been endorsing this portability and importance for providing vendor diversity, especially in the light that there are other offerings in the market that have dependencies for different hardware and also for the layer one software from different vendors, which is not the case for, for Exxon. You know, a question specific to multi-vendor open RAN. If an operator moves from one vendor at a radio site to multiple vendors at a radio site, who does that integration work? I think we've seen operators take a DIY approach. We've seen some bring in third party integrators, but for operators that are thinking about open RAN, any advice you'd give them with regard to this integration question? First of all, I definitely agree that integration will be one of the key factors for open RAN architecture. If you just look at today's network in the vertically integrated end to end system, we basically today, when we do the, the, the offerings, we do immense amount of integration and verification in, in our networks to ensure that uh, despite the fact that we are running thousands of configurations and hundreds of networks, we have the same level of performance, the KPI, SLAs, and security assurance is handled and is also maintained during this lifetime. So this is basically where we are today. And then when we just move to more horizontal, the segregated network, indeed, uh, with different multiple vendors, then this kind of piece has to be handled uh, in the Opera network architecture. So our fundamental belief is that we will play a critical role uh, because neither operators or third party vendors has the same level of uh, system knowledge for network design and integration as we have. Accordingly, we will be offering advanced engineering services, both for integration as well as the for lifecycle management. So we will actually have two two separate key offerings. One is vertical integration, the other one is horizontal uh, integration. For the vertical integration, this is mainly for the cloud run. And under, for the cloud run case, uh, kind of enabling our software stack running in different cloud platforms will be enabled by the vertical integration. In this case, we have two separate offerings that I've, I've mentioned before. One is the system verified solution and the other one is the validated on that I just mentioned were different responsibilities in terms of integration and lifecycle management and also deployment orchestration. But we will also offer the horizontal integration and this is especially important where we are actually mixing and matching different compute and the radio vendors. And here we will be offering integration of the third part ORUs to our run software, which is both for purpose build run as well as the cloud run. And this offering will include the, what we call day zero and day one integration to really ensure the compatibility of different components, that the fact that the both pieces can work with the standardized interface and running end to end. But most importantly, we will also offer the LCM because when we different vendors bring different run software stacks, it needs to be consistently integrated and interoperable to ensure in, in a successful deployment in the commercial network. A lot of really valuable perspective here, Sibel. Um, any summary thoughts that you'd leave our audience with? I mean, definitely it's exciting times. Uh, and I think we are in the verge of a very big transformation in the networks. 
towards the high performing open and programmable networks, which will be the foundation of the networks of the future. And as Ericsson, we are fully committed to the lead industrialization of the open run and bring the benefit of cloud native and open run network architecture to the industry. And we do that in multiple ways. One is that we have a strong offerings for in the portfolio for the three pillars of Open Run, cloudification, open management, and open interfaces. We also complement with our advanced engineering services to enable uh, a scale and ease for enable for operators to have the TTM and the efficiency. And lastly, we are also enabling a large ecosystem and working together with industrial leading partners to enable a larger ecosystem for these networks. And we believe that towards this shift of open interfaces and open APIs, we will see a big change in industry where we see the different performance levels with unlock new business opportunities for our customers. Well, I really enjoyed the conversation. I know that that's valuable for our audience. So I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today, Sibel. Thank you very much.